Uh, today, I, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to say hello, and I'm, I'm glad to finally uh, get here to Regina. Uh, uh, today, I'm here uh, to uh, discuss the uh, deep, deep science of uh, neuronal and hormonal parasympathetic musculoskeletal motivational responses to the organic cortisol. Of, uh, maybe, maybe uh, I just want to. I want to uh, uh, first. I'd, I'd like to begin with a with a with a question, and uh, uh, that question is, how much longer could you stand me talking like that? <laughs> right, you were probably saying to yourself, oh my God. And first of all, I know it's Regina. And, uh, and man, I wanted to say it is my pleasure to be here. I've been uh, waiting to come and present for this. John actually told me about this event two years ago. And he said, man, if there's one thing I want you to talk about, I want you to talk about motivation. And so what's interesting is a lot of people said, Martin, do you want to really go just to give a 15 minute talk in the gateway of Moose Jaw? Is it, <laughs> you know, and, and be away from your family and away from your friends? And I said, yes. You know why? Because of all the things that John said, I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I'm a presenter, I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, but most importantly, out of all of those things, my job is to empower people. So when he asked me to come, I said, for sure, I'll be there. And this posed a particular challenge for me. What I had to do is I had to say, how can I condense 15 years about success into 15 minutes? How could I do that? And, and I said, but man, this is going to be awesome because in my 40s, I'm going to get to tell people what I wish I heard in my 20s. And now today is the day that we do that. So are you ready? Yeah. Is this an English-speaking audience? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. See, this is a fitness convention. And what scares me is that fitness is lacking energy, man. It really is. Like, I've been walking, people walk in and out. People get more jacked up when they're walking in and out of church. So what I'm here today is I'm here to fire you up, but fire you up in a way that you understand that it's your job to fire people up. We heard a lot about science today, and I'm not going to discount science. You need the certifications and you need the education. But if you have no energy, you have nothing, and you will be broke. So when we talk about what I'm going to go over today, it's going to be about success. It's going to be about a success formula. And before we do that, what I want to share is, hey, a lot of people might think that this is what success looks like. Right? You might say, man, Martin, how did you do it? How did you get to do what you did? You must have just been successful. But I'm here to warn you, that's not how it works. I don't care how many seminars you go to. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to go backwards. You are going to build your success off failure, off tragedy, off catastrophic mistakes. And you need to make them, and you need to make them a lot. See, most people aren't successful because they're afraid to do that. See, success is not easy. I wish I could stand here and say that it was, but if you're prepared to go through that, you can. And before we get into success, what I want to do is I want to start off with some mathematics. See, my job this week, and I said to myself, you know what? I'm here to tell you about stuff you didn't hear in school. I'm here to tell you about the stuff you should have heard in school. See, this so far, in most of the stuff that we've heard, you've heard some of it before. You've heard about training. Man, everybody seemed really knowledgeable about the functional movement screen. Everybody has heard about intermittent fasting. But how many people have really convinced you that you can do anything you want to do and have anything you want to have as long as you have the right strategies? How many people have convinced you of that? So let me, let's prove a point. With a show of hands, how many people right now have all the money they want? <laughs> right, we got one. There's always one. So everybody should be asking that guy for money. <laughs> How many people have all the relationships in their lives? Every one of them is absolutely perfect. Who has that? How many people have the, the personal fitness level? You are at your peak. When you walk out and you get out of the shower in the morning, you look in the mirror and you're like, whoa! I was going to go to this show today, but I got to stay here to spend some more time with me. How many people have that? So see, we're laughing, but you know what the saddest part is, the tragedy? That means there's a gap between what you want and what you got. Today, I'm going to show you how to close that gap. And we're going to start with some math first. So let me show you a math formula you probably never got taught before. A plus S equals R. Anybody familiar with that one? Because that's the most important mathematical formula you could ever learn. Anybody? Here, I'll give you the first one. A stands for ability. S stands for strategy. What do you think R equals? 
Results. See, we always get that one. Everybody gets results, but watch, here's the mistake that people think. Hey, every one of you guys could make a million dollars this year, you could. Do you believe that? We, we got one. I think, it, I think it's the same guy. As he's, as he's whipping off cash tonight at the bar. Now, A stands for ability. See, here's the mistake that most people make in this formula. They say, I can't make a million dollars because I don't have the ability. No, 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 see, you're wrong. See, you're not lacking the ability, you're blocking the ability. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Every one of your clients can lose weight, every one of them. See, I work in the field where I, I live in, in hundreds of a second ounces, that's where my space is. I can't afford to make mistakes, and everybody seems to make it. They have the ability, what I have is the strategies. So let's go over it, I wanna use an example right now. Everybody right now, listen to me good here, everybody right now raise your right hand as high as you can. Okay, now keep it there. Now wait, now everybody raise it a little bit higher. Wait, wait, put your hands down for a second. Now I said the first time, raise your hands as high as you can. Now aside from a couple of people, everybody put their hand like this. And I said, how about a little higher? Oh, okay. <laughs> how about some more? Sure. <laughs> now hang on, let's try it again then. So everybody raise your hand as high as you can. All right, we're, we're getting smarter. Now watch this. What if I said, what if I said for a million dollars, get your hands 100 feet higher, what could you do? What could you do? Get on the roof. What if I said 1,000 feet higher? Get top of the elevator. What if I said 10,000 feet higher? Airplane. Airplane. Look what, do you see what you guys are figuring out? What are you guys figuring out? Strategies. See, strategies, I'm a strategy hound. So much so, and I warned John about this. Guys, are you prepared? I have come to Regina, and I'm about to do a strategy example that I have never done before. I'm being honest, too, so I'm worried that it may not work, but I don't care. Because remember that thing, like sometimes you're gonna make mistakes. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Now, I need one volunteer, but I need a volunteer that is like a, probably the strongest person in the room. Who, who's the, who do you think is the strongest person in the room? I see John voting for somebody over here. All right, bring, bring him up. John, come on up, I'll bring you up. All right, now I've never met John before, but I know John through the internet, right? So this is not a trick. And, uh, and I am not about to uh, pull up my, pull up my, uh, Socks, that used to be an old trick I used to do. I'd say, hey, would you mind if I pull up my socks? And then I would put my pants, and then I would put my socks on. But uh, right now, this is a belt. This is a real belt. It's a double bonded leather belt. And what I want John to do, because he's pretty strong, is I want you to just, you know, tear the belt in half. <laughs> yeah, just, just rip it in half. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. He's, he's figuring out strategies, but I, that's not my knife either. <laughs> no, I said rip it in half. Okay, with your hands, no, no knives. Okay, good, but do you see what he's doing? He's figuring out strategies. Now, if I took this from John, and he's looking at it, no, it's a real bell. If I took this from John and I said, hey, John, do you think it, you could rip this in half? What you might say, no, it's, I can't. Or what might you say, no, it's impossible, right? But what's interesting is, if you really work hard enough on strategies, and I don't know if this is gonna work or not, so we will see. <laughs> And I'm a little shaky right here because, you know, presenting here in Canada, being like the sole American, I've been here in America getting ripped on left and right, I'm nervous. Now, and guys, remember I said, I, you know, energy, you feed off energy. Let me, guys, make some noise right now and fire me up here. I said make some noise. <laughs> I need more noise. <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> no. No. Now, guys, what's the message right here? What is this a metaphor for? <laughs> no, here, I'll give you a few messages. First one, actually, I cut my hand, but it works. First one, guys, don't confuse difficult with impossible. See, you just don't have the right strategy. See, you might have said, I don't have as much money as I want, or I don't have the things that I want, or anything, uh, you know, I don't have the relationship I want. You just don't have the right strategy. You're not executing. You don't lack the ability. John had the ability to do that, but he didn't have the strategy. Now, would you have figured that out? Probably not. Probably not. So what's the purpose of coming to this lecture today? What are you here for? To learn strategies on how to be more successful. Are you collecting those? See, here's the biggest mistake. John, if he comes up to me later, you know what the biggest mistake would be? John comes up to me later and he says, man, that thing was really cool, it was so fun up there, that's awesome, man, here, take a picture with me and he leaves. What should he do? How did you do that? I'd like to learn more about that. 
So that's the question nobody asks. See guys, don't ask for a picture and an autograph. Ask how they did it. Then somebody will be taking pictures of you. It's about strategies. It's almost amazing. We just had Alan Cosgrove, it, it, you know, hey, the most successful guy, nobody wants to ask a question. Don't be afraid to ask about the strategies or it'll never happen. So guys, thank John too for coming up here and doing that. Now, second, second message. When you make a promise, you might break it, but when you make a commitment, you're gonna keep it. I brought another belt, because I knew I was gonna rip that belt in half. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep my belt on right now. Now, we are, gonna, we are gonna talk about something right here. How many people have seen this logo before? Right? How many people are familiar with that logo? Raise your hand. Awesome. Now, how many people have seen the arrow before? Okay, we have a couple. Okay, and all the, all the people that have their hands up that have seen the hour. How many people have seen the spoon? Oh, see, I've changed it up a little bit. So wait, let's look, let's look at some things here. How many people see the arrow now? Does everybody see it? And by the way, the spoon is right here. So the thing I want to share with you is there's a big difference between being aware and paying attention. So you've been aware of that logo before, but are you paying attention? There's an arrow right there in the design. But here's the cool part, and I'm going to warn you. This is the thing. You have a choice to leave the seminar right now before I say this next slide, unless you have great courage. OK, it's a courageous group. See, once you see it, there's no going back. See, up until now, if you don't have the money you want, and you don't have the relationships you want, and you didn't know that the strategies were there to get them, it's not your fault. But see, after I've shown you your potential, after I've shown you that your ability is limitless, now, whose fault is it if it doesn't happen? I, I, hang on, I gotta help you guys out with this. Everybody point your hand like this. Point your hand like this. Now point your hand like this. Now point your hand like this. And wait, hold it out there, hold it out there. This is a very powerful exercise, ready? The answer will be, it's my fault. Hold it up. Whose fault is it if you don't make as much money as you want? Whose fault is it if you don't have the relationships you want? Whose fault is it if you don't achieve the life that you wanted? So that's called responsibility. Very important, things that I teach to my athletes all the time. So now, what we are going to do is we are going to go over six formula steps. Six steps. They're very easy. So profound, but that's the thing, right? See, mastery isn't making something simple, complex, and scaring people. So that's how the, that the fitness industry thrives on that. No, no, no. Make it simple so people can do it so they can be more successful. And that's what I had to do. I had to boil it down to six things. And you're going to see there's going to be a lot of integration between what Alan said and what I'm going to say. Now, first one, ready? Another exercise. Everybody, put your right hand up in the air. Right index finger pointed. Now, everybody, close your eyes. And now, you have five seconds. Point your hand in the direction of true north, the exact direction of true north. And everybody has to make a pick. Ready? And go. Five, four, three. Don't, straight up in the air is not a choice. Two, one, and time. Now, everybody, open your eyes. Man, we got, we got hands going all over the place. We got hands going back, hands going forward, hands going this way, that way, hands straight up. How many people, life or death, feel so confident that you said my hand is on the direct course of true north, not one degree off, that I'm willing to bet my life on it? How many people? Man, we got one. That's, that's, a, that's a bold statement. All right, so within exact degree, you're ready? But you know it's that direction? All right, now I'm going to hold you that. Now, guys. Guys, there is a knife up here. No. <laughs> now, now, what we're going over right here, though, is, now, what if I gave everybody a compass? What if I gave you all a compass right now, and the compass was aligned with true north? Would everybody then be able to point in the direction of true north? For sure. See, and what people are missing, they're missing the compass. They don't have a compass for nutrition. They don't have a compass for fitness. And here's the compass I'm going to challenge you with. How many, people in your, how many people right now in this room have goals, goals for your life? Who has them? And if you're not raising your hand, that's a bad sign right off the bat. So hold your hands up if you have goals. Hold your hands up if you have goals. Now keep them up unless the answer doesn't, you, you, the answer becomes no. Okay, you have goals. How many people have them written down? All right, so we still got some people. How many of you have them with you right now? We got the oh, same, same guy with all the money. How interesting. <laughs> now. It's interesting, guys, you know what? One of my big things I would say, every morning I wake up or write down my goals. You know, number one today, obviously, was give kick-ass presentation in, <laughs> in Regina. But uh, every day I write down my goals, they, and then that night I review what did I do, and then my goals continue to be written down. That has been the simplest success thing that I could tell you that has anchored me and moved me forward than most people. 
See, if you, if you don't have your goals on you, you've got dreams and wishes just like everybody else. And you know what? They're never going to happen because everybody has those. Goals would be the first step to give yourself some direction. It'll be your compass. Number two, we just heard this from Alan, but I'm going to go through it again. Guys, you got to get focused. Now, let's do a, a, a powerful example of this. You ready? How many people have a cell phone? All right. How many people text on that cell phone? How many people text while driving on that cell phone? Be honest. Even if you did it once. Oh, look, look at all that. Look at all the hands. Hey, do you know that they've proven that a less than a three tenth of a second lapse in focus while you're driving, look at a text about nothing, you can either kill yourself or kill somebody else. That's how critical focus is. And Alan talked about it, that man, you can't focus on a lot of things. See that right there? Do you know they still use a chair to tame lions? We heard about Siegfried and Roy. Do you know they still use a chair to tame lions? It's true. Do you know why that is? It's the most powerful tool they got to tame them. See, it's not the whip, it's the chair. See, what happens is when you put a chair in a lion's face, it tries to focus on all four legs of the chair at one time, and it's paralyzed. See, you may be, and, and here's the other part. You might say, well, I'm not good at focusing. How many people here think they're not good at focusing? They just can't stay focused. Be honest. See, that's a lie. You're focused on stuff all the time. You're just focused on the wrong stuff. If you're on some internet site focused on the wrong stuff, you're still focused. It's just the wrong thing. So first, you got to get less things, but it's got to be the right thing if you want to be great. Success formula step three. We gave you some direction. You got some goals. We're starting to get you focused on those goals. Now you know what you got to do? You got to take action. You want to know that if I had to say what's the single most thing that's made me more successful than other people, I act. I take shots. I get up at the plate and I swing, man. Sometimes I miss, but I'm going to take cuts hard. Most people, you know what they do? They give themselves a no before somebody else does. So let me give you an example, a parable. There are three frogs sitting on the edge of a river. Two of them decide to jump in the water. How many are still on the edge of the river? How many? All right, so how many people say three? How many people say one? All right, all the people that said one, you're wrong. What did I say? Two frogs decided to jump in. You ever decide to go on a diet before? How did it go? You ever decide on some New Year's resolutions that like six hours later they're gone? See, no, decision doesn't equal action. You gotta act, you gotta do something about it. See, procrastination, my definition of that is getting ready to get ready. So most people are always doing, man, I'm getting ready to go on that diet. I'm getting ready to make all that money. No, 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 start acting, and maybe something will happen. And don't wait for the time to be right. Start acting, and maybe the time will be right. Action immediate. Action is critical. Now, I love this. This is one of my favorite slides. Look at that. Where are these cats? Because you should be around them. They're pretty fired up. Do they look into it? Now, let me ask you, how many people here went to school? Well, yeah, why would I even ask that, right? But how about this? How many people were in school? Okay, how many people were into school? You might be saying, well, wait a minute, Martin. You, you must, what are you talking about? You must have something wrong with your prepositions. But let me show you the difference, ready? See, if you were in school, you paid your, your tuition and you were enrolled. If you're into school, you paid attention and you were involved. See, into school is you walk up to that teacher and say, my God, Mr. Rooney, that last lecture you gave was the most incredible thing. It blew my mind. I can't, even, I can't wait to go home and start researching in that, man, I cannot wait till class tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> but see, instead, most people are just in it. See, we need crusaders. We're losing the war. I don't know if you heard. Obesity's at an all-time high. Anybody hear that? Hey, oh, diabetes, all-time high. Cancer, all-time high. Who's doing something about that? It's supposed to be you guys. And if you're not fired up out of your mind, no one else is going to be. See, fitness doesn't need any more people in fitness. It needs a whole lot of people into fitness, big time. I love this slide, too. <laughs> Look at the things that I've talked about. Now, hey, you might, have that little, you might have that little knot going on in your gut. You know what that knot's telling you? He's right. But that sounds hard. Look, get crazy, get fired up, uh, you know, write down my goals, man, that, that costs a lot of time. I want to go out tonight. I, I like doing other stuff. 
And see, if you want to be successful, because you all said you did, see, then you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're going to have to miss some stuff. You want to get shredded? you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You want to get fit? you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. You want to be a great presenter? you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. See, and I always push that comfort zone. Today with the belt, I didn't know if it was going to work. It made me nervous. Now I'm more fired up because it worked. <laughs> like, now I'm more energetic. But the thing is, look at that soccer player. Does he have to get used to that? If he wants to play high-level soccer, does he have to get used to the fact that that might happen? Yeah. And he's comfortable with that. Guys, other stuff in my history. I'm a black belt in judo. I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I am very comfortable with somebody wrapped around my neck, sucking the life out of me. That doesn't bother me. The first day, it did. But I had to get used to being uncomfortable until I got comfortable doing that. What are you prepared to do? How many books are you prepared to read? How many things are you prepared to go to? How many speeches are you prepared to give until somebody listens? Because if you do it long enough and hard enough and you get comfortable being uncomfortable, anything is possible. Let me give an example. Everybody right now, interlock your fingers. All right, everybody got that? Now watch this. Take them apart and switch them so now it's the opposite. Does that feel comfortable? Or hang on, here, everybody cross your arms. This one's even weirder. Now, cross it the opposite. Like, now just do the opposite side. Does that feel uncomfortable? But does it mean it's wrong? Now, see, and if you're going to, now what if you started doing it the other way for a couple of weeks? What would happen? It would become comfortable. See, the examples are all around us all the time. You just have to do it. If you start reading every night, at first it's not going to be comfortable, then it's going to get comfortable. If you start eating well all the time, at first it's not going to be comfortable, but it's going to get comfortable. You can do it, and so can your clients. Now, I love this one, too. Step six. Everybody put your hand up like this. This is powerful. When you look at your hand, I want you to look at your hand right now. Do you know you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Who are they? What do they do? How successful are they? How do they eat? How do they think? Where do they go? What is their job? If, it's, if you got the wrong five, you're not going to make it happen. Put your hands down. Hey, studies are out there. John, if, if you live and, and only hang out with obese people, what's going to happen? You're going to be obese. Hey, if you only hang out with billionaires, you know what's going to start happening? You're going to start making dough. Right? So who are you hanging out with? And here's the tough one. Again, comfortable being uncomfortable. How about, with a show of hands, is there anybody that you have right now in your life that you might need to remove? How many people have somebody like that? It would probably be better off if they weren't around you. See, that's hard. But you have to make tough, hard decisions if you want to be successful. That's what this is about. And especially if you want to help people. Now, how about this one? Does anybody here have a client that they should probably get rid of? Because then they could help more people. How many people have that? <laughs> then get rid of them. They're not helping you, and they're bringing you down. Fire them back up. And now we are down. Almost, we are down to the last slide. Now, what I would say is, hey, so maybe for some vindication or some validation, guys, was it worth it for me to come here and speak to you guys for 15 minutes? <laughs> Even more so, was it worth it for me to ruin one of my good belts? But I can always get another belt, but I can't always get those 15 minutes back because it's your most important commodity. Now, the last couple of tips that I have for you. The first one, there is a big difference between the word ordinary and extraordinary. Or actually how they say extraordinary, right? How many times do you use that word? Hey, John, how was the movie? Oh, the movie was extraordinary. Nobody says that. When, you, when somebody leaves your session or after somebody spent time with you, what do they say? And see, if they're not saying, holy cow, that just blew my mind. I don't know what I need to do. I either need to go buy some belts and rip them in half or go buy some broccoli and blueberries or water. or I got to do something. I got to start writing my goals down. See, that, that's an extraordinary experience. Are you giving those out? What I was here to share with you is you got to have the science, but if you don't have that stuff, man, you're only, you're only half full. And you're not going to impact people. That's why we're here. So... The piece that I can say, the, 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 the strategy that I think is the most, and hopefully you'll see it was proved by what I tried to just do. When somebody gives you a task, always do more than expected. Always over deliver. And if you do that long enough and hard enough, I promise there won't be anything that you can't have. And in conclusion, I, I'll say it again. A lot of people asked me, they said, man, are you going to give up three days with your family? You know, guys, I have a newborn at home. And my wife was not excited about me being here. It's going to cost me three days to be here, and we're not getting paid to do it. 
But I said, yeah, I got to go. And you know why I got to go? I got to go there because I got to empower somebody not to make them a good trainer, not to make them a better coach. See, somebody in that room might cure childhood obesity if I say the right thing. Somebody in that room might go out there and stop cancer if I just say the right thing at the right time. That's why I'm going. And what I'm hoping is that some of those seeds that I dropped off today, they take purchase in the most important piece of anatomy you got. And that's an open mind. So guys, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed that.